Hello, friends. It's Friday night. It's Friday night. Are you guys ready? So, as always, I know there's a delay, so I will wait till I see some of you guys comment, and I know that I'm live. If you're watching out after the fact, there's no delay because you're not watching it live. So, hello, friends. Uh, happy Friday in this lovely month of October for um, myself and my fellow Canadians. We are heading into our Thanksgiving weekend this weekend. Very excited about that. Heading into um, my anniversary, to, well, our anniversary, because Rich gets to be included in that. But yay! Hi, Bridget. How are you? Hello, friends. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Kathy, Patty, Lauren. Hi guys, how are you? Hi Louise, how are you? What time is it in England? Is it late? Hi Margie, how are you friends? Uh, good day from down under. Hello, how are you? Uh, thank you, you like my shirt? I feel very um, good in this shirt today. When Devin and I were in, uh, hi Janice, how are you friend? Miriam, Yvette, Heather B, Valerie, how are you guys? So. When Devin and I were in uh, Montreal, uh, if you follow me, you will know I've talked about this. I love anthropology. Like, I love that store. So we went in there and I always head right to the sales rack because it the store is a little bit on the pricier side. So I always like to look at the sales section first and I hit pay dirt. So I found this shirt there. So I am loving this top. It is in one of my favorite colors. And then I put some fun earrings on tonight too. So, and my shorts, I have rainbow shorts on. So I am just channeling all the things that make Vicky happy to get ready for tonight. So let's see, hola from Puerto Rico's in the house. I love it. Hola Zori, how are you? It's 1 a.m. What are you doing, Louise? Are you, are you a night owl or um, just like to watch the lives and stuff and, and like to be here live? I am a night owl until I got on this health thing that I'm doing where I'm really trying to in my 50th year to get some control over all of this. So I try to go to bed like no later than midnight. So that is different. If you guys know me, you'll know like that's a big deal for me. I, I never I'm in bed a lot of times like in bed ready to go to sleep at 1030 and that never happens. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Thank you, Patricia. Um, I love this color, but, and then anything with ruffles and like, it's like all of the things I love, like ruffles and eyelet, you know what I mean? So, and it was on the sale rack. So it's all of the things that I love. So yay. How was everybody, um, this week? How was your week? Did you guys have a good week? Did we have any birthdays that we're celebrating? Any anniversaries? Anything you want to share with me? Any new grandchildren, any new babies, anything that's exciting. Um, I always like to hear what's going on with you guys. I talk a lot about myself, but uh, I love to hear uh, from you guys, from the VBOO community, right? Thank you. Um, Anna's saying she's proud of me. This journey is hard stuff, right? But I have never felt this good ever, ever. And I've never been as committed ever as I am this time around. So hopefully this is the one, one and done, right? I'm hoping that we're, we're done. New baby geckos hatched yesterday. I need to see pictures of that. That, what is a baby gecko? What color are they? Are they brown when they're born? Or does it depend on what kind of gecko it is? Are they in little tiny eggs? Like, I need to know more about that. So please share with that. Happy anniversary, Joanne. That's very exciting, 35 years. Rich and I are celebrating, I don't remember, 1998. I think it's our 23rd anniversary. I'm terrible with that kind of stuff. But on Sunday, it's our anniversary. So um, we got married on Thanksgiving weekends, uh, weekend many moons ago. Hi, Dion. How are you? I want to know. Um, a baby calf. Jersey. Is that Jersey? That's a type of cow, right? Jersey cow. Are they the brown and white spotty ones? I need a picture of that too. You guys have to share that on uh, the Vicki Booten um, creative community. I need to see all of this stuff. It varies. They are under two grams. Like, are they tiny? And like, is there, a, 
does a mother is good? To, how does a mother take care of baby geckos? Like how do I need to know more about all of this? You're going to have to share more. I need to know these things. I love the whole animal world. So I need to know these things. Very exciting. Uh, what else? Did I miss anything? Um, hi, Paula. Paula is on this journey with me. A lot of you guys, cause I talk about all the things cause I'm in a room with friends. There could be tons of you out there, but I feel like, you know, when I do Friday Night Lives that this is community and we talk. And I talked about this Gina Libby program that I had done in the spring, but I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't in the right mindset. I was very stressed out with work. So I followed along for the whole thing and then just oh, the crap hit the fan in the summer. I just ate all of the things and I feel like it's all residual COVID and pandemic stuff. So... I went into the fall group like full on and it's just eating healthy. It really is. And drinking so much water. Um, and I just feel good and going to bed and just taking care of myself. I think for the first time in my whole life. So pal is doing it with me. There's a lot of you guys on here that are doing it with me. So I hope you guys are all really enjoying it as much as I am. If Patty's here and Angie, they're in there. But yes, we're having a lot of fun. So um, I did a Facebook Live yesterday, so only on Facebook. So I'll share what we did last night. But we were talking about the new Distress uh, Holiday Sprays from Tim Holtz. We play with those a little bit. And then I'm going to show you guys uh, what I did today just for fun. I kind of uh, played with that stuff. So love it. Valerie's there with me too. So lots of fun. But anything else? Anything else? Did I miss anything else? We booked my flight to Saskatoon for Christmas. I'm so excited. Janice is going home to see her mama and her family. I'm very happy that that happened for you. I was thinking about that. Uh, oh, and Margie's birthday was October 6th. I did know that. Happy birthday, my little pocket pal. Uh, I love you. So I hope you had a, a birthday as wonderful as you are. And I hope you ate the cake and did all the fun things. So, oh, yes, and Poppy. Yes, Poppy is doing it with us, too. I love it. Uh, back from vacation in North Carolina, back in New York. Hi, Lee. How are you? I hope you had a great trip. I hope you had a wonderful trip. Um, anything else? Because, you know, we have to talk. Because if you're new, this is part of our thing. Um, it's not just me going live and sharing lots of uh, fun, crafty, artsy stuff. But the saving grace for us here is the whole community aspect of it. So everybody that's watching who chats with me is like my best friend. So I have to see what they're all up to. Hi, Yessi. How are you? And I sent you an email. Make sure that you saw that. Um, hi, Vicki. My four friends and myself are at a crop and watching you. That's awesome, Kathy. Where is your crop? Where are you right now? Is it a big crop? I am... Just so everybody knows, like know this now, there is a fly down here. So that fly is going to land on the art while we're making it tonight. I will guarantee. Well, when I was working earlier, the fly was landing on everything. So stupid fly. Uh, so just be prepared for me swinging my arms all over, batting the fly away. But uh, that is very exciting. I was just thinking to myself that I really want to go away somewhere but within Canada, because I don't want to have to deal with all of the um, tests right now. And then I was thinking, but it's too cold. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere cold. Do you know what I mean? I want to go away somewhere, but Canada is a big country, but it's not like we have a Southern part. Like I can't go to South Carolina or Florida or something. You know what I mean? So I don't think I'll be going anywhere for a while. So be prepared. That fly just flew right past my face. Be prepared for lots of Friday night lives and hanging out with me because that's what we're going to be doing. I was supposed to come to Nova Scotia. Do you know how much the flight was, Elaine? $850 return. So Rich and I were actually going to be there. We were planning on coming out and hanging out with Mike and Kelly and then going to the store. And um, the flights were so much. I said, I, I could go to Europe for that. Like that's craziness for a two hour flight in Canada. So I didn't do it. I'm like, I'm, I, I will be stupid and spend money on things that are frivolous and, and too much money. But there was just principle in that. I'm like, the whole plane was empty. There's no way I was paying 850 to fly within Canada. Um, where you live, Vicki, is the southern part of Canada, 100%. And do you know that on Monday here, it's supposed to be like 80 degrees? 
we're not going to get a fall here. All the leaves are going to end up dying and falling off without changing color. It's too warm. I don't like, I love the summer, but when it's fall, I want to walk out and it to be kind of crisp. Right? I'm good if the sun is shining and it's a beautiful day, but it was like 72 out there today. It's craziness. So um, that flight cost is ridiculous. You would think they'd want to encourage people to fly. I would think so. But I was like, there is no way that I'm paying that. So 80 in October is gross. I agree with you, Patty. So on Monday is supposed to be 80. So I'm like, uh, our pool's still open. I should throw the heater on and have a pool party for myself. I don't know. Our leaves are in peak color in Ottawa. I know I'm going to get in the car. I want to get in the car and drive somewhere um, a couple hours away so that I can just go see the leaves change. I want to go canoe on a lake. So if you have anybody that you know has a winterized cottage that I can go stay in for two days, I'm going to get in the car by myself and just go drive and canoe somewhere all by myself. Uh, Canada is beautiful, though. Every uh, It is beautiful. It's not a complaint. I live in a very beautiful place. It's going to be 90 in Kansas tomorrow. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy, right? But anyway, anything else that we want to talk about before we get started? Hi, Loretta. How are you? Working tonight. So miss you all. Miss you, too but you can watch on the replay, okay? But I'm glad that you poked your head in to say hi. You're going, uh, go to Collingwood. I should do that, right? Isn't that where, like, Blue Mountain? Is that Collingwood? So I want to go somewhere anyway. Um, that's the norm in California, but today was rainy. It's been very foggy here. Like, when you wake up in the morning, there's just fog everywhere because of the weird temperatures going on. So there's a little bit of leaf change, but it's not very pretty right now, right? The cruise, any updates? They're booked. Um, there's a cruise that leaves in June, and it's going to Spain and France, and it's out of Southampton uh, in the UK. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a wonderful trip. And then there is one in November. No, I'm a liar. There's one in October out of Galveston, and it's doing, I think it's the Western Caribbean. Um, it is like Cozumel and remember the place I can never remember the name of where you launder your money. So, um, but yes, they're there. You just need to go to cruiseandcrop.com and you will see that both of my cruises say new and all the info is there. There are great rates. You get better rates booking with our group rate than you will with all of the sales that are on with Royal Caribbean. But yes, all that information is there. Just so you know, the October uh, cruise is almost full. Um, we are, it's a bigger one because the room is bigger in October. And I think I made it like only 40. I, did, I don't want, I, I, I like it to still feel like a decent sized group. And that one, I think are there's only maybe I don't even know. This was a week ago. So there might be eight spots left. So seriously, you guys are showing up. It's going to be awesome. And then even the one, because I think the one, the European one, it's a little bit pricier, right? Because it is Europe. And uh, that one is more than half full as well. And that one is up close and personal. Like it's small. That group, I think, is max 30. And it's on deck 10 on that boat with huge windows. So you don't usually get that with cruises, right? With the crop rooms are usually in the uh, lower parts of the ship because that's where the conference areas are. So that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a great time on both of them. So yes, cruiseandcrop.com. You can call uh, Cherie or I just forgot the other girl, Sarah, I think is the other girl's name. And they will take such good of, good care of you. They'll help you if you need flight information, connecting flight information. If you want to add on any like side trips, like in the UK, for sure. I'm staying after and going to see my friend Chabelle, whose birthday I believe it is today, or it was yesterday. But I will stay in London and I will try to as well for any of my friends in the UK. Um, I will try to plan uh, classes for that as well. I'm working with ladies that I've taught um, at an event with them before, and they're just concerned. They just want to make sure they can get the people there, but um, it will be probably after the cruise. I think I will plan it for after the cruise, but uh, if you are in the UK or in or near that area and you would love to come and do in-person mixed media event with me, we're planning that as well. So it's going to be lots of fun. 
So I think that's everything, right? I think I shared all of the information. Hi, Julianne. You need a cruise buddy. And there's ladies that are on uh, VickiBooten.com, uh, Vicki Booten creative community who are looking for uh, roommates. And I always say, like, you're never in your room. So find somebody who wants to share a room with you, right? Or see, there's got to be one of our friends in Nova Scotia, Julianne, that want to go. It's so much fun. Like I said, the, the plus with cruising and crafting is all your food is taken care of, all your accommodations, everything is factored into the price. So I love that. It's not like, oh, what are we gonna eat tonight? It's like, what are you not gonna eat tonight? There's so much food. You can do a drink plan if that's your thing. If you wanna have a funky monkey and a, a Bahama mama and you wanna try all of the things, then you do that, right? So I love it, it's so much fun. Yes, ask Shamel to schedule a class for cruisers. That would be lots of fun. Yes, we could do like I could do something with Shamel. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be lots of fun. I'll have to talk to her. Hi, Irene. How are you? Um, so um, happy birthday yesterday to Lori Whipple. Happy birthday, Lori. So let's flip the camera around because you're done looking at me. But are there any questions before we get started? Um, I love when I'm looking right now. You have my undivided attention. I just realized, too, in my shirt, I've had it on all afternoon. I'm like, what is that, um, that button? <laughs> Cause I might've taken the tag off of it today. How would we pack craft supplies for that? Um, where would I begin? You don't need anything other than your basic kit. Uh, I will mail you everyone. I will be mailing their, um, class kits to them so they can bring them with them because we run into issues right in England now with all of the new rules. Um, everybody's kit will be mailed to them. And I recommend just put that in your carry on. And then all you need is a basic supplies and we will have, there already are Facebook groups for both of the cruises. And if we're using say paper punches or anything, we'll put it out there. So we don't need everyone to bring a paper punch. We'll make sure that there are enough paper punches that we can share, but you are on a cruise that offers crafting. I would not recommend that you spend all your time in the bowel of the boat fly uh, crafting, like spend the time in the classroom because we'll do, we always do a travel album or some type of album. I don't even know if the European one, I just might make it a mixed media album. It might not just be based on travel because then we get stuck. I have to try to find travel theme product. And then sometimes I'm using stuff that isn't even my jam. Right. So it's lots of fun, but it is, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And you need very few tools. There's people here like Margie, you're here. You don't need much, right? You don't bring anything extra to craft. I give you enough stuff to work on the whole time you're on the boat. You do not need to bring anything extra. You don't have time for it. You're going to be doing watching the belly flop contest and, and maybe taking dancing lessons or going to the movies. Like there's so much stuff to do. So it's awesome, right? Would love to go on vacation and visit my family in Boston, still in lockdown in Melbourne. I, I but bet you would, right? I just feel like we're getting closer and closer all the time. So I'm going to flip cameras and let's talk about what we're going to be doing tonight. Belly flop contest. It's a for real thing. Yes, yeah, see, you know, and you sit, everybody sits on the edge of the pool and they put this big platform up and then you have like little skinny guys doing the belly flop and then the big beefy guys doing the belly flop. It's so much fun. Lots of fun. So we have fun just because you know me, right? Any word on the 49th and market kit, they're all gone. And it is not a kit I can reorder because um, a lot of that product is stuff that I just added in there. So it can be one of those things that if you like the idea of it, I will look at what their newer collections are and I can do a new one. So 49th and market, love the company. Um, I can look at something so we can do something new. Okay, so something new. It's going to be fun. But yes, for that one, no, I only ordered, there were only a few of them. It was just something I kind of threw together. And then like always, it was popular after I showed it. So moving forward, I'm going to have to think about that, right? Do I do it as a pre-order? I'm moving stuff. So just a second. Well, it's flippy floppy and noisy for a second. 
just so I can see your comments when I start working. So who was able to check out last night when I did the impromptu Facebook Live? Date for Doodlebug. Ah, Vicky, I was supposed to look at that. Okay, give me a second. I'm looking at my calendar. Oh, my goodness. What is wrong with me? It's because I have 20 million things. We're actively working on my next collection. Okay, so today is the 8th. And I have an event I'm teaching at on November 5th. And then we have the Warm Wishes event the following weekend. So how does everybody feel about October 24th? I'm putting a note for myself. Event. Doodlebug. Just a second. Doodlebug. And I will save that. So that is the date that I'm picking. So it is a Sunday and it's October 24th and I will make sure I post that, but that is, oh, and you guys wanted to see. So I found them. Remember yesterday? I'm like, I don't know where I put anything. Everything's all over the place. So if you are new or um, you haven't been here for a bit, I did a doodle bug kit because I absolutely fell in love with their, um, with their cute and crafty collection. So I ordered, I had talked about this on my Facebook group and I said, who's interested? And there were about 75 people who said, yes, I would buy that kit. So I ordered as many as I could get. Like they did not, I think, I don't remember, but they ran out this, this product line, they ordered a number of times and it sold out. So I ordered what I could. They're all sold out. But my whole idea was, is that I'm going to do this as a free class. So some people got the kit, so they have everything I'm using. But it wasn't, it's not like a proper class. It just will be fun. It's a fun class. I will probably start it at like 1030 on the 24th. And we'll do paper cutting. Then we'll take a break and we'll just make some stuff. So this is what I'm going to be teaching that day. So that is a sheet of foundations paper. And then we're going to, I will post the ink colors that I use, but really it's just matching the collection. Okay, that's one of the layouts. We have uh, this one and some of them like work as double. I think you could do it as a double if you wanted to, but I don't know if I did it like that. I just kind of played, right? But I love this idea. So for you friends that are cropping, like it's fun, right? To put some of our cropping photos and stuff on there. So that's one, that is another one, lots of photo options. This one that I felt that even though it's cute and crafty, this layout could be any photos on here. Um, if we have all the stuff, can we do, There's. it's free, Kristen. You don't have to pay. Everybody has access only if they have the kit. So every, it is a completely free class. And Kim, the if you go on, um, my website, I think the kit is still up there as sold out. If not, I will post it again. But yes, it is pretty much almost everything, right? It is um, elbow cuff. <laughs> you're good. You, you're thinking like, why would I be doing this for free, right? It looks like a class, which I just kept making. So a lot of grid style. So there's this one. So it's their, uh, the ephemera pack. It is, um, I think there's two of ephemera packs with this maybe I don't know there's a hundred pieces in their ephemera packs so ephemera packs uh it was the paper collection pack I used the collection pack it was uh two different size of hearts for their um I don't know what their little jelly things are called I can't remember um but it's gonna be fun so it's a collection pack and then just some white cardstock and stuff and black cardstock but look how fun right scrapbooking friends and then I just did lots of layering, tons of stuff. So that's another one. There's this one. So that's what we're going to do that day. So if you have Cute and Crafty, I will link it on here because if you're going to go shop for it, I'll look to see where I can find it. But again, this is not like if you can't find it, sorry, you can use whatever products that you have, but it is just something fun I'm doing. But nobody can really give me a hard time, right? Because it's free. Is this kit available? No, long sold out, Candy. 
this is something we talked about um i think in august and then i ordered the product and this kit actually sat in the store for a long time then no one was really buying it and then when they saw the finished projects then they sold out in like five minutes so um even if you have a different doodle bug collection and you don't have cute and crafty you totally could just use it's doodle bug themed so you could use the little cute farm one or whatever you have right so definitely right um irene anything like that just email me okay because i'll never remember on here okay um so just email me so that is what will be what did what day did i just say was it the 24th um but i will put a link right but it'll be fun and like i said friends doodle bug is definitely has a very distinct style so even if you don't have cute and crafty just anything that you have right like at first when i opened it i'm like what i'm not i love it but what am i going to do with this and then it all just kind of came together so we will have fun with that if you have the collection already yay i hope you haven't used it all you can play along with me if you just want to hang out to watch the whole process then you can do that if you have the kit yay you have everything you need to do it will it be recorded yes and it'll be on youtube okay it will be on YouTube and I will do it live, but it will definitely be recorded. Okay, and that is what we're making. This is my favorite because we're gonna do kissing technique and it was with oxides. So I know this one is Kitsch Flamingo. I am sure this one is uh, Mustard Seed. Uh, what is this one? What is the lime one that I just totally forgot? I don't know, I'll have to look that might, I don't know. That might be, what is the robin egg one? Could be peacock feather, but I don't think so. But I will find it for you. I wrote it down somewhere. Oh, broken china, maybe? No, it's too blue. And this is twisted citron. That's twisted citron. And this is the egg one. Is it robin egg? But yeah. But all you have to do is literally pick rainbow colors from whatever you have that matches the paper. That's it, speckled egg, thank you. I think it is, but I think I started with speckled egg and mixed another color in there because the speckled egg was a little too gray for me and I wanted it to be a little bit more blue, but they are definitely oxides, okay? And I will list all of it. I will do the list now that we've <laughs> picked a date and I will post it on uh, the creative community and I will tag it to the top. So if you are not a member of the Vicki Booten creative community, you'll want to go on there. And then I will also plan it um, as an upcoming live on uh, YouTube. And I will put the whole list of the product with any um, share sale links. Okay. I think that's helpful, right? I think that's good. And another thing I wanted to tell you guys so um it yes salvage patina it could very well be that one i think it's a combination of both yeah i'll, I'll look at you question october what time um i think 10 30. that's usually good for me because you know that's going to take a while that is not like a an hour long class that's going to be a big one and friends a lot have been emailing me saying can i get an update on the warm wishes kit I'm just waiting on the green card stock and it has shipped from Utah. It left at the beginning of the week. All of these kits are ready to go. As soon as the card stocks here, you, I won't be talking to you for a week because you're going to just see like so many freaking, um, emails do, 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 do with all of your shipping info, because I need to get this out like too sweet. But this is the cardstock that has been back ordered for so long, it's not even funny. It's pine. And there are four sheets in here. So um, that's what I've been waiting for, this. And it's a nightmare. But I was just listening to my friend Seth Apter, and um, there were a couple of manufacturers on there. And it's only going to get worse before it gets better. I'm so, Debbie, you don't even know about the box card set. My name is on it. It is product with my name on it and they sold all of them out and never filled my order. So I have one box of warm wishes card sets. One. 
that they sent me as a sample box that I don't even think is a full box. And all of them are gone. And there's nothing I can do because they literally, she's like, we are doing an inventory uh, to see if we can find any in the whole warehouse. And there were none. So I still owe people emails and I have to refund everybody the money for that because it's like, it's one of these, like, eh, uh, there's, I can't do anything, right? There, I, I can do nothing, nothing. I have no control over any of it. And I, I just have decided because I am a positive thinker that just let it go. Do you know what I mean? Just let it go. No, I'm sure we're equally as sad, Debbie. And here is the other thing. I hate having to send the emails out. It always, I feel, makes me look like a dummy, right? I'm always sending emails out. Sorry, the stickers didn't show up. Sorry, this didn't show up. And I'm sure some people who don't know me think it's because I'm not um, very good with all of this, right? Or that I oversold it or did this or that. And it's all stuff that's completely out of my control. And it always makes me feel bad. Like, just so you know, every time I press send on bad news, I feel sad. So it is hard. Um, and know that 49th and market is not a class. I might use it one Friday just as a live for the paper and stuff I use. But it was never intended that way. It just literally was like, oh, look, Vicky likes this. Uh, I bought 24 of them. It was not a big thing. Because like I said before, I add stuff to the store that I think everybody's going to love and it just sits there. Um, so moving forward, I learned something last night is that I'm going to talk about things before I order it. And then I don't know, do I put it on a pre-sale? I don't know. But I will definitely do some kind of 49th and market like the doodle bug class where I order a small amount of kits and then I do it as a free class because I really, really love it, right? Um, Don saying, I'm so sorry, Vicki. This is why I never do pre-orders, even though people ask. But you would think, Don, that it wouldn't be an issue. Mine was the first order that went in there. But there again, it's a huge warehouse, right? So they've changed it. It's supposed to be better, but I'll keep trying. And then I'm just going to put a disclaimer on there that um, if for any reason uh, there's issues with fulfillment of the product, you can expect a full refund and then people know right i think you go in knowing but i try right pre-sale is the answer and that is one of the questions was about this beautiful collection that is around here somewhere so a lot of you have been emailing me about fernwood and you're seeing stuff pop up now right you're seeing stuff pop up for fernwood but the only thing that is shipped so far is the paper and the stickers. So as soon as I get warm wishes out the door, I will be doing my Fernwood pre-order. I have 100% ordered this. The paper is all here. And um, we're going to do this in the new year. So this is a perfect Christmas thing, right? If you want like a, your family, like, what do I get you for Christmas? This will be the perfect thing. I thought it would uh, was a good thing to do, right? Right. So it'll be the same deal. And I haven't picked a date yet, but it will be in the new year. And it gives us something to look forward to. So just like the warm wishes, full, huge bag, five pounds of product in that, I'll be doing Fernwood as well. And it's actually a bigger collection, right? So it's, it's even more yummy. So yay, I'm super excited for Fernwood too, Don. It's beautiful and I haven't even, I haven't even had a chance to work with Warm Wishes yet. So, and we're working on my next collection, already working on that one, right? So yesterday, I have to take a drink because I'm gonna start coughing. Uh, Fernwood is only pre-order everywhere unless it's paper now is shipping, but all the embellishments are all pre-order. And then I asked, I said, okay, I didn't order as much of this as I, I should have. Can I order anything else? And she's, and my sales girl was like, there's lots of stuff in stock, but three of the items are oversold. So that means what I have is what I have. I'm not, I can't order anymore. So when that Fernwood goes up for pre-sale, if it's something you want to partake in that weekend, don't wait on that one. I cannot add any stock because it's three main items are oversold and I don't know if they'll reorder any of it. 
right? So just keep that in mind. It's totally your choice, right? Yeah, well, what a pace. It's crazy time, Karen. So last night, just for fun, I popped on and we did an impromptu live using um, the two new holiday stain, mica stain sets from Tim Holtz. I only use the two bluey colors out of them, but we use the mica stains. I'm going to do another live, like a whole live doing some stuff with these, but it was more because I'm like, friends, I have these in the store and they're sold out everywhere, right? Um, so I wanted to just show you guys what they look like out of the package. Did I miss when Fernwood will go up? Um, Catherine, probably in two weeks, I'd say, because as soon as I'm done, because it's way too much for me to have all pre-orders on my Shopify, I need to clear some of this stuff out. So as soon as, um, I mail out the warm wishes, I will do the pre-order. So at, by the end of the month, it'll be up, okay? And like I said, all the paper is already in. Isn't this beautiful? Can you see that? Look how pretty that is. So I'll send a newsletter out as well. And then the question was, when we were doing this, one of the questions that came up were, um, how do you seal the mica? Well, there's a binder in it. So look it, there's no transfer. If it is, it's it's minuscule, right? So very fun. So this was the first one just as a test. And then I took the wet stencil and we kissed it down and then added some art crayon through the stencil and gold glaze. Look at that, the stencil brush. So we kind of played with that yesterday. And then this one, we had added the sprays to a stencil and then added in the open spaces, Art Crayon Distress Ink and layered multiple stencils in there. So isn't that fun? So that was kind of just a fun thing, but I have to show you something magical happened. So if you guys remember when I sprayed this, when I sprayed that whole mask or the stencil, which is this one. So when I sprayed this, I sprayed the two colors of mica uh, spray on the stencil and then kissed it down and then colored through it right but do you remember that on the back of the mat i pushed a piece of foundations paper into the little um open areas of ink that were left on the mat and then today just for fun i put the stencil back on and went through it with some art crayon and distress ink and then just kind of did some watermarking just for fun because it was there. And because these were just kind of blobs because it was picked up off the craft mat. I love how this turned out. And then do you see this magic right here? The gold stars. I was working on this for a plan for tonight because I thought keeping Natalie in mind, wouldn't it be fun to do rainbow but with black or navy. So it is like a whole different application of rainbow, a little earthier for the fall. So we're going to do something similar to this, but I have, after I work through it, thought of a better idea. So this is what's happening tonight. Um, affiliate links, Tammy, is if you look at any of my past YouTubes or any Facebook, if you click on any of my affiliate links, they will work. So even if you're not shopping for what you click on, you can use any of the old links. I haven't put anything up yet, but I only use them for Simon Says Stamps, A Cherry on Top, and scrapbook.com, right? Yes, Natalie. I was channeling some Natalie, but then after I did it, I worked through it and found a better option for this. So we're going to do this tonight, right? I wish you could see what I just did. What did you just do, Lee? So I did this, I'm going to show you this tonight. And then I went and I laid um, the Diane Reevely, um Dilution Starstruck stencil and I went through it with some gold glaze. Well, then the stencil um, had gold glaze all over it. So I just misted it with water and then I put it onto this background and I brayered it. So remember there was distress ink on here, which is water reactive. So when I put a wet stencil on and brayered it, 
it picked up little bits of this ink plus there was still gold left on it and look at the magic that happened where is it this one this was literally that dirty stencil that i sprayed a ton of water on it and then i brayered the heck out of it and out of everything i worked on this is one of my favorite things and i'll tell you why it's my favorite thing because i would have wiped this all up with a paper towel and it would be almost impossible to achieve the magic that happened here so i we're gonna work through a lot of this tonight um and i can't wait to show because we'll do this i could never recreate this twice but i get some other kind of magic so that's what we're doing tonight so moving forward most of my Friday night lives are going to be a night where we only focus on a technique. And then the following week is always going to be the part de, where then we take what we made and create something from it. So I am open to anything you would like to see me make. So we can start a thread on the Vicky Boot and Creative community. You can post on here. I would love to know cards, altered item, um, I can do, we can do some kind of mini book, tag book, scrapbook pages, whatever you want. I love the challenge. So I will make a list. And when I feel like the technique that we are doing will relate really beautifully to one of the things on the list, then I'll surprise you in that next week, we're going to do that. So I really feel like I'm enjoying the vibe and the results that we've got by focusing in on the technique. And then that gives you a whole week to practice, play and try it yourself. And then the following week, we will make something of it. So you're not, cause I know a lot of you probably hang out and watch me, but you don't participate. Cause you're like, I love what she's doing, but I don't understand the purpose of it. And you know, for me, there doesn't have to be a purpose, but oh, there's gonna be so many cards, Mona. You just won't even believe it. Cause I'm totally digging the whole card world now. Christmas tags, all of the things. We'll make a list. And seriously, I will do all of it. Right? So, and Irene, it's coming, man. We're, Irene wants paper towel art. So make sure moving forward that all your dirty paper towels, like everything that you use, you keep. And I'm going to show you how to make art out of them. Okay? So it's coming. Yay! So let's get started. Let's get started. So I have, because we talked about it last night and, oh, I wanted to share this with you friends. In my shop are these two 49th and market things. And I ordered them deeper with a purpose because guess what this will work with really beautifully. If you want to elevate the warm wishes kit, this ephemera stack is amaze balls and maybe i can do something bonus with it right i love it and then look at the rub-ons so and if it's popular enough i'll put another order in but i think that this will work beautifully with the warm wishes kit like it's actual perfection so just so you know i wanted you guys to know that was my um thought process is that I thought these would work really beautifully with um, the Warm Wishes collection. Okay, so I'm done with that. Now let's make some stuff. Let's make, did you order those? I don't know, Natalie, um, but uh, just send me a message, right? Such an enabler, not here and it, I am, but my purpose is always, um, I think my goal with the Vicky Booten shop is I'm going to start carrying a whole whack of mixed media stuff. I love to use my favorite tools and I fill the store with things that I'm buying for myself. And then, so when we get to it and it's like Friday night and you're like, where can I find it? Well, then at least I know that you have somewhere you can find it. Right. Because you know, sometimes I'm using stuff that you just can't find right now. I know what to spend your gift certificate on. Definitely. There's lots of stuff in there. So for tonight, I'm going to do rainbow. I was inspired that I wanted to do rainbow. I'm going to be using art crayons. So I'm dropping stuff because I have crap all over my desk. I'm going to use my art crayons. You can use ink, use whatever you want. And I have as well some stencil brushes. 
the price tag on the side of my cup. I have my gel crayons here and I have all three glazes. Okay. So some version of this might go on here tonight. And a whole whack of stencils. So let's talk about what kind of patterns you'd like to see. And when you're buying stencils, I want you to keep this in mind because as I was working through my stuff, you need all different scales. Meaning that when you buy, um, what do I have around here? Because I did not grab a ton of the, but you might love, say this one was super popular. So you love this stencil, right? Because you look at it and it, in your head, it totally makes sense what you could do with this, right? It's a Mandela. You could do like pretty art with it. You get that, right? But when you want to go in with a stencil, say like this, that sat in the store because people didn't see the potential with something like this. You want to make sure that if you want to layer in this stencil, you need something that's smaller scale. So when you start buying stamps, stencils, that's why I tell everybody you need a script stamp, a, a text stamp, um, just something that is linear and um, will fill in spaces, right? It doesn't matter if you can read the words. It doesn't even matter. But you love that because that's small repeated pattern that you could fill these in with. But then you want things that are repeated pattern that you could use like this. Or maybe it's a little bit bigger scale that's repeated, but it's super simple. The other thing I love if you're doing mixed media with stencils is you want stencils that have equal open space, like negative and positive space. So you can do your artwork within the open space and then also use a stencil to uh, create art with as well. So keep that in mind. And then you wanna make sure that you do things that are just repeated patterns and then things that are obvious, like look, pretty hearts, love that. But look how awesome this is that I could put polka dots in my hearts. And then I could use a smaller polka dot stencil to then layer more. Layering, layering, layering is not only color, but it could be texture and it can be scale and size. So that is my art tip for tonight is um, when you look at the, these ones were my exclusive ones. The designs that I created for this one were done with purpose because I wanted to have things that are layerable to start before we got into, if I start drawing flowers or doing something like that. When you're doing mixed media and layering art mediums, you want things that make building the art easier. So always keep that in mind. Don't only buy the hero patterns like the big beautiful butterfly or the flowers. You still wanna have small, medium, large repeating patterns. It's super important as you move forward. If you're really enjoying what I'm doing, a key to success is varying your pattern size. So that was a little Vicky um, thing that I wanted to talk to you about. And great for your gel plate. Every stencil is great for your gel plate, right? Love them. Um, the heart stencil, no, it is a, I'm pretty sure it's Crafter's Workshop, but I, I've had it for a long time, so I don't know. I don't know if it's on there, but if it is, it's something I will order with my next round of stencils because we will be doing a gel plate two class where it will be another four week live classes to a week so a minimum of eight classes i will be posting that as well before christmas so you'll want to make sure if you haven't taken the gel plate one class you'll want to do that before gel plate two because i won't be covering basics in that we'll jump right into the next level right so for tonight let's talk about what pattern we're going to use i might start let's decide Will you be mad if I use the hearts or should I pick something else? I don't care what stencil you use for this. If you have something like this, let me get up and grab one. Like something like this can work or a giant floral. Anything can work. Okay. How'd it go? That was fucking hard. Right? Oh, that was very difficult. Sorry about <laughs> that, friends. I apologize that my 20 year old just walked in here and swore but he just had a um, exam 
and it was, was standing out there and they're like that crying the that it's the hardest the thing, thing ever, ever. It was finance, and he had to memorize how many, what are those things called? Formulas, like 15 to 20. 15 to 20, like, huge formulas. So he is like, that was terrible. So um, are we okay with this? The giant butterfly, that'll be the second one I do tonight, okay? We'll do a butterfly. So um, I just don't, I, sorry, you're welcome to the boot and life in the boot and household, right? So he was coming down to tell me he just wrote, wrote a midterm that was very hard. And he forgot that, um, yes, Riley, you're in a room with me and a lot of other people. So I apologize for the curse. Um, so I'm going to do the hearts, all right? Use whatever, whatever you have, right? Yeah, buying gel plate too is a gift for yourself. You will not regret it. We had so much fun in the gel plate one uh, class. It was so fun. So I'll do the hearts, like I said. I don't, let me look quick. I'm just looking on my computer quick. Just a second. Um, let me look to see if it is still available. No, I don't care about that because I know that will make some people angry if I use something you can't find anymore. You can't, I think this is old, friend. Should I, I might use something else. I'll pick something similar like that. I love it too. And maybe I will do something similar to this when I do my next um, round of stencils. But don't forget some of my stencils I've had forever. And just knowing the number on here is like 300. They're probably up to a thousand, right? It's okay. I'll, okay, I'll just use it. It's, but this is an old stencil. Oh, people are going to get mad at me. Okay, let me find my sheet of plastic and let's just start. So we're doing rainbow. So think about that, right? Pick your color palette and I'm going to start. I have yellow. I have orange. I have pink and red because I will probably blend those two colors. Oh, I got you. The kid sitting beside me wrote nothing on his page and then left after an hour. <laughs> really? I swear to God. So he sat there for an hour, didn't write anything, and then just left? Yes. Did you at least write something? Riley, was that you? No. <laughs> I answered every question. Are you telling me that, but the kid was really you? Yeah, I would have left a lot earlier about that too. Oh my goodness. Okay, so get your rainbow out. Get your rainbow out. So, Natalie, don't be disappointed. I'm still going to um, do something dark. Yes, I could totally do this as a cut file. I'll do it as a cut file, okay? Um, you have a similar heart stencil, so yay. But did you like that, Riley? Was that really you? Did you like that, Mari? I'm like, were you, are you telling me a story, but that, that kid was actually you? So I'm going to use art crayons. And I'm going to use my gel crayon and then I'm going to layer with glaze later. Okay. So this background is something I'll probably use for a layout next week. And then we'll do a second version of this with, um, look at you making me sound like Halloween. No, I, you're not dark. She doesn't have a dark soul, but I actually love to marry dark in with, rainbow like i am i like when natalie uses black right so um i am going to do the rainbow but why i changed it i'm going to add place the stencil on top of it again after and add my black second the first time i did it i added the black first but then as i'm putting all my color in it was carrying black in and making it really dirty and i want the contrast of bright and dark so that's why I'm starting this way. So go ahead if you need to and tack this down with some washi tape. Do I have any? I'm just going to wing it. But if you're doing this with me, you probably want to secure your stencil because you're going to be adding friction either with an ink blending tool in your inks or with your art crayons, right? So I think it's going to be really fun to do rainbow with black, but it's going to be black and navy, I think, when we get in there. Okay, so let's get started. So I will start with my yellow first, and then I'll go into my orange because I can do all my warm colors 
and I don't have to clean my uh, stencil brush right away. So I have a sheet of plastic. You can use your craft mat too if you want. So I'm going to put some yellow down. Now let's talk about, so this stencil brush right now is completely dry. So I can definitely pick this up and I can deposit it, right? And I'm going to kind of start in this corner and it is soft and pretty. So when you use um, art crayons completely dry, it is very soft. There's tons of pigment. So you get this really pretty kind of muted effect. If I put that on here and I load it and then mist it with a little bit of water, you will, it will be more like ink consistency. Like I've just made it wet like an ink. So it will go on a little bit more vibrant. Okay. So that's the difference. I'm going to use it all pretty much dry. So I'm not even going to clean this stencil brush and I'm going to go in and I'm going to put my orange down and I'm going to blend it right into that. Be aware with whatever scale that you're using that you don't go too crazy with each color that you run out of you run out of room for your rainbow, right? Uh, when Vicky mentions you, I get confused for a second. Did I say it with Don? Vicky, can you do like a rainbow effect with fall colors? Sure you can, right? I uh, just use earthier colors, but you're going to see, I'm going to go in with some dark. Okay. I'm going to go in here now and pick up my orange and I am going to blend that a little bit into my yellow and maybe up in this corner a bit. I'm not going to put much. Okay, just make sure your stencil isn't moving on you. And if you want to deepen your color, you would just come in and load your stencil brush up again, okay? Or even watch, I don't even have to load it. I could just put a blast of water on here and then get more orange. And it softens and blends your color a little bit too, okay? I am going to now take this paper towel's wet and I'm going to take some of my orange out because I really want more of a pink blending in with the orange. So my paper towel is a little bit damp. I don't need to deep clean this, but I just want to take some of that pigment off. Okay. And I'll wipe my mat off. And now I'm going to go in with the pink and I will load my stencil brush up. Hi, Teresa, how are you? Okay, so now I have a pink, but it'll probably have a little bit of a salmon tinge. Oh, no, it's going pretty pink. So I'm gonna blend that. But remember, we still have purple. I'm gonna put a little bit of red in there too. Just because I find that the pink has a little bit of a purple tone to it. So I just want a little bit of red up in there. Because I'm using them completely dry, you will get a little crumbly crumbly. And now I'm going to go in with purple because blue and red will make purple, right? Yellow. Orange is red and yellow made orange. So next will be purple because it'll be blue and then green. Okay. So I am just going to see what I get when I mix my purple and red. Mm, I want more. I can tell already that that's going to be a little more red than I want it to be. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we get. And this is only one of our layers, right? So a little bit of purple here, and then I want to go into blue.
I said, it's a little red. So let's add just a little on there. Very nice. Okay, cleaning my purple off because I want full on blue now. So I'm gonna give the end of my stencil brush a little mist. If you have multiple stencil brushes, you could just switch your stencil brush out at this point, right? So I'm just taking it and cleaning off that pigment. I have heard, I have a hard time putting the colors together in the right order to get pretty and not mud. This, you can't make mud. If you're doing it in this order, you'll be fine, right? If you took my gel plate class and we did some color theory in there, the rule is you cannot mix all of your primary colors. If red, blue, and green, if red, blue, and green, if red, yellow, and blue are present in any kind of form within secondary tertiary colors, if you mix them all together, you will make mud, okay? So that is what you always have to remember. If you don't want mud, all three primaries cannot be present in the colors you're using. I'm going to go in with this blue to start. And then I'll go in with the darker one as well. So let's see. Still a little dirty. And that's why I have to clean. I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to use a clean brush because I um, don't want mud. Oops. No biggie. This is easy enough to line up again. There we go. Um, and the stencil brushes, if you own none of my products, it is the one thing I would say you will not be sad if you own my stencil brushes. Because I have to say they are one of my favorite things that um, I ever came out with, with American Crafts. Hi, Suzanne. Susanna, you're not late. You're just in time. Okay, let's put a little bit more of that blue. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the darker blue and then we'll go in with green. And you could carry it on with like a little bit of turquoise if you wanted to as well. Um, whatever you want to do. Okay. Pick that up. And then I'm going to just do my green kind of in that corner. Okay. But I am building a little bit more of that blue. I would like a little bit more vibrancy there. Okay, cleaning my stencil brush. And I will go in with the green. But I decided I have used a lot of other products and we haven't used a lot of Vicky Boot and stuff lately. And a lot of you guys are probably owners of this product. So I thought it would be nice if we did some stuff with art crayons and my mediums. So you grab your stuff. Because remember, I always tell you guys that mixed media won't last forever. Um, you have to watch because it does not have an indefinite shelf life. What's everybody working on tonight? Because some of you are going to be playing along and then some of you might be card making or stamping. If you're still out there, Dawn, what are you working on? Are you making cards, doing taxes? What are you doing? Oh, I love that. 
but do you see why a stencil with big open spaces will work really well for this, right? Work really well for this. So let's just build some of that green. We're getting a little bit of a turquoisey where we're layering it. And I'm gonna take one of the deeper greens and layer a little bit of that in there. Just on the bottom. So I will show you, without the stencil on here, what we're looking at. Very pretty, don't you think? I should have done a little bit more blue, but we'll just go with it. You're cross-stitching. I love it. Slimline card. You're not feeling great tonight, so just watching. Take care of yourself. I'm working on my grandbaby album. I love it. I love it. Some of you might just be um, sitting back, drinking a glass of wine, hanging out, whatever you need to do on a Friday after a long week, right? So I'm loving that. I think that's really pretty. We could leave it like this, but you know me, I'm not done. So I'm going to place my stencil again. And now we are going to layer with some of the smaller patterns. So I'm going to go in here. And how about we can go in with polka dot because that's easy, right? And let's see, you could go in now with distress ink. I'm going to, we're going to do something because I think just for fun, you could go right back in with um, art crayons again and just build the color. I'm going to try something. I'm going to see what happens if I go in now with some of the gel crayon. I'm just curious, nothing might happen, but let's see if I can see that pattern, if it does anything different. Oops, my stencil brush is dirty. So it sure did do something. Look at that mess I just made. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. Vicki, look what you just did but it was doing it, it's lifting it here. And that's what I thought was gonna happen, but my stencil's either dirty or my stencil brush. So let's try to fix the mess I just made. Which we can look at, ta-da. And now I will just go in with some yellow art crayon and make sure my stencil brush is clean. because that was a hot mess of dirt. That's what I just made, dirt. Okay. That is making me mad. Because I don't even know where that gray is coming from. So we will work on that. Um, by putting, I'm going to go in again and move my stencil with art crayon and I'm going to use the darker yellow and the yellow we originally used. And I'm just going to stencil a little bit of a pattern on top. This is tone on tone. I'm just going to layer tone on tone. Just gonna layer tone on tone. And let's see what we get. Ooh. Okay, and now I'm gonna go in with the orange. Don't press too hard with your art crane either. You don't need to, okay? Because they will break on you. D 
do 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 very fun very subtle you might need to clean your stencil in between depending on what colors you switch to I'm going to go in with the red. I'm going to take some of my orange off of this. Okay. Pick up my red. It's very subtle, right? And now, got to clean your stencil off too, okay, friends? Because don't forget, you're using all those colors on there. Uh, you will pick up and move that pigment around. Hi, Dandy. How are you, friend? I am so happy to see some of our friends that have been around for a long time that we haven't seen for a little bit to be popping in. Because I certainly do miss you when you guys are not here. So happy to see you. I'm gonna show you another thing that we can do, remember, because this is water reactive. So when we're done this part, I'm gonna show you something else. So let's go in with some purple. Make sure our stencil brush is clean. And I love when you guys actually, when you get to make, like that you do something from the things that we do on a Friday night or Thursday night or whatever night you're watching on when you post. I love it. I love to get this, to see the stuff that you're making. So keep that up, it's awesome. Let's do a little purple. So what else is happening in your worlds? love to be a part of the chatter I don't know who's out here tonight because sometimes you're working away you're like I don't have any time to talk Vicki I'm actually doing what you're doing okay some purple dots in there now so now I'll switch my stencil brush and because there's green on here I'm actually going to clean my stencil because purple and green will make mud right because purple and green have red, yellow, and blue represented. So if you mix those colors together, you're going to get dirt. So don't think you can go fast and cheat and not um, end up. Oops, look it. I got funk on here. But it's okay because I can just drip some paint down there later. Okay, so I'm going to take that clean stencil. And the green, clean my plate off that I'm doing over here too. You are knitting Christmas gifts. What are you making, Elaine? What do you knit? I love that. You're watching your granddaughter. I love it. I um, love my grandma knit crocheted. She did all of the things. And she used to make all of us, She all of us got a crocheted tablecloth because that was a thing. I just misted this with a little bit of water just so my green will go a little further. Um, we all got a crocheted grandma tablecloth, all of us, for our hope chest. And she used to knit us sweaters. Do you remember? Um, the sweaters that like all of us would get like either a dinosaur or I had like a ballerina or an ice skater 
do you remember those sweaters and then the the wool was like not super soft but that was a um big thing right that you would have that sweater with on the back of it was like an ice skater an ice skater or a ballerina does anybody remember those sweaters or the dinosaur and it was on the back of the sweater the color was a little higher zipper buttons in the front um they weren't weren't mohair like they it was like a the yarn was plasticky feeling <laughs> But I totally remember that was like the most cherished thing. I wish I kept it. I wish I would have kept it was the best thing. Hi, Nancy. You have three that your grandma knit. Maybe it was a Welland thing, Patty. Maybe we had to live in Welland, right? I could, I'd never get rid of them ever. And I wish that I had the one with, I had a white one with a pink, ballerina a ballerina and a pink tutu on the back of it and i loved that sweater i mary maxim sweaters i need one i wish i would have kept it i'm very sad that my mother didn't keep that it's your fault mom but my mother is out there she knows exactly what i'm talking about my grandma used to make them and the slippers that my mother absolutely loves and i ended up finding some on etsy for christmas and got Sheila a pair of the um, slippers like my grandma used to make. Right? You know the ones. And I've talked about this before because my grandma, at her, when we went to her house, she had her furnace. I don't, mom, I don't even know what you would call this. But her furnace was in the floor. So you had to watch when you walked on the grate that you didn't burn your feet at my grandma's house in the winter because the heat came up from the floor in this giant grate. And I laugh because when you put slippers on at grandma's house, all the bottoms of the slippers were melted off <laughs> because they're made out of a plastic yarn, right? So um, all the bottom of her slippers would have uh, burn holes in them. True facts, right, Ma? And Sheila loves those slippers, those um, knitted slippers that look like they are rows and they're done in checkerboard and were very hard to find like it took me forever to find those slippers for my mom for christmas but yeah those are the things that we remember like i totally remember for my grandma that and with thanksgiving coming um her bread she made the best and we talked we've talked about this before her bread was made from bacon fat she used the lard from drippings right so her bread was crazy but bacon it tastes like bacon and it lasted for one day and then the next day it was a hockey puck hi nancy I have some knitted afghans and love them. We all have uh, knitted slippers and mittens every Christmas. I make knitted dishcloths from the leftovers. My mom loves those dishcloths. The crocheted and knitted dishcloths, she loves those. And I forget, I think if Mrs. W is out here, but she's probably not, she's probably watching Matt race. Um, she, uh, I think brings me those uh, crocheted or knitted dishcloths. My mother loves those. We had the same floor grates, used to dry our hair over them. You know what I'm talking about, right, Margie? And at grandma's house, like you would burn your feet on that thing in the winter. Like you did not walk across the grate in the winter. My grandmother's tea biscuits and shortbread cookies were the best. Yeah. Grandma was not a very good cook. We laugh. She was not a very good cook, but she could bake and she made great bread. I am going to go in now with my water sprayer and I'm going to mist one more layer because remember these art crayons are water soluble. So let's see if we can get a little bit of water marking just to break up these a little bit. So we'll let it sit for a second and then I'm going to, I am going to put a paper towel on top and lift some of that off. And then we're gonna do the last step for this one, which is adding the black. That's gonna, Fentex slippers. Yes, Judy. 
Do you remember me talking about these last time? Fentex slippers. Absolutely. My mother loves them. Real wool doesn't melt on the grate. Yeah, but those sweaters were, slippers were from Fentex. It was some kind of plastic yarn. Do they sell it anymore? Because maybe that's why I had such a hard time finding the slippers, because I don't know if Fentex yarn is a thing. Remember, Grandma tried really hard to teach Vicky how to knit, and all I ever could knit was a um, scarf or Barbie blanket because it's whatever, when she would put the row on the knitting needle, that's as much, I didn't know how to build off that. So I would just knit for like a mile straight off of that, right? Yes, they sell it again. I'll have to look again for Christmas to see if I can find my mom. Oh no, look what I got on here. Are you guys laughing? Um, the pattern from the, <laughs> I got an extra pattern on here. Because I just made pattern from my, um, from the paper towel. Oh, uh, Vicky. Let's see if I can break that up a little bit now. I just like this because it kind of softens the color. And it all depends how much um, art crayon you have on here, okay? But that was just funny. I lifted it and had a whole bunch of uh the pattern from my um paper towel that was funny stuff just happened there friends right in front of your eyes and i'll show you in a second what when i take this off what will happen i just got to get the water up and then we can actually buff out the water marking. So look how pretty these are. But can you see the pattern of the paper towel in there? Uh -huh. So let's go now and I'm going to show you if I lift all that water and if I buff with a clean spot of dry paper towel, I can probably get a little bit more of my water marking to pop out. Oh, look what I just did there. Thank goodness that I'm putting another layer on here. So that will blend away. So do you see the water marking is coming out as I kind of buff that off? Okay. Let's see. Don't do that. Let me buff that off. I saw water. See? <laughs> But now we're gonna do something fun. So this is pretty, you could leave it like it is and build your layout on here. Now we're going to make it natified. We're gonna Natalie this up. So I'm gonna quickly clean off my stencil. Yes, the crochet chain and my knitting, whatever was on that knitting needle was all that I could knit. I did not know how to add to that. And then I just never went beyond that. But we were always crafting some different thing, right? At grandma's house. Did anybody else go and stay with their grandma? Like if I was sick and couldn't go to school, my mom or dad would drive me to grandma's house. Like that's where we stayed when we had the day off or a P PD day or whatever. You, we went to grandma's house. So when you went to grandma's house, we would watch Lawrence Welk. We would watch um, Price is Right. And then her programs, soap operas, right? That's what we watch, game shows and soap operas. Her programs. Oh, your grandma wouldn't watch you? Yeah, that grandma would. Like, and I think we all have the other. I don't think I ever stayed at my other grandma's house, ever. Um, but that grandma was the grandma. Like, she was like a grandma. Like, when you read in books and stuff. My grandma, my dad's mom, was um, the grandma. 
She was tiny little thing, a, a retired nurse, and she was awesome. Edge of the Night was your mom's show. I love it. Yeah, no, we watched everything that was on CBS. So um, Young and the Restless, Guiding Light, As the World Turns. That's what we watched at Grandma's house. You know, growing up, like all of my friends watched um, General uh, Hospital and stuff. And I was like, no, I watched Channel 4, right? The Edge of Night. Yeah. My mama lived four hours away, but I did spend summers with her. And I remember her stories. Yeah, it was awesome. So friends, I've cleaned this up so there's no color on it. So what I'm going to do now, be aware of which side you want to do this. Now I'm going to use the actual stencil to create a pattern. So I want to make sure that I line it up. I'm coloring on the back of it, right? So however your pattern lines up, you're going to add your pigment to the back of this. So I'm going to go in now. You can use art crayon. Or you could use ink. You could totally go in here with Distress Ink if you wanted to. You could go in with gray. You could go in with black. You can go in with navy. Or whatever color you want to contrast with that. The easiest thing if you have will be Distress Ink. I'm not going to lie. Is to put Distress Ink on here. Or the other thing that if you have them, the gel crayons will work really well. Did your grandma craft? Her crafting was like knitting and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like um, my grandma died in her 90s and uh, that had to have been like 17 years ago or so. So they're like, that's the crafting she did were, was her um, uh, fabric stuff. She sewed. But, you know, it was the house that we always colored and like you did that kind of stuff at grandma's house, right? So I'm going in with a gel crayon because if you notice, these color beautifully on here because they're a softer medium than the art crayons are. So even though this looks like scribbly dibbly, when we go to add it on here, as soon as I mist with water, it will all go to... Um, watercolor okay so i'm just doing this around this shape i have never done this before so i don't actually right at this point know what it's going to look like when we kiss it down but i am okay to just give it a try and i'm also going to put some of the dark blue on here too okay you're going to be that grandma someday i agree I'm totally going to be that grandma. I will be a grandma just like my grandma. I'll be that grandma too. Have you seen the um, the uh, show where um, the grandma's babysitting and the mom's leaving for work and she's like, okay, see you later. And then the grandma feeds them cake for breakfast and they go to the park and they're jumping on the furniture and dancing around the house. I'll be that grandma. My kids will probably all be like, mom. I told you, you, you can't do this or they have to eat their vegetables first. And I'm like, vegetables, vegetables. I just want to be the grandma that the kids adore. So you watch, I'll be that grandma. I want to go to Disney. Yeah, I want to do all of the things. And my mother is that mom. Like my kids uh, absolutely adore my mom. You know, and Rich's mom is uh, the sweetest grandma, too. We very luck, much lucked out in the grandma department. So my mother is, like, the best. Grandma, we're very lucky with having mom and dads that, and my dad's a great grandpa, and my father-in-law was a great grandpa, too. Get on the floor, play with the kids. So we've been very lucky. Okay, so now I'm going to put a paper towel down and I'm going to miss the heck out of this. And then we're going to kiss it to the heart art and see what we get. My name is Victoria Winters. What was that show? What was she from? That has to be from a program. Our stories, right? My programs. 
So see what happens? The art crayon, the gel crayons will totally blend out. And then we're going to press all of this anyway. But I'm nervous because, you know, don't make it too wet because that water's going to have to go somewhere and it's going to bleed into our hearts a little bit. But I think I'm okay with it. So let me test it first. Let's see what happens. And I'm going to blend that a little bit just so I don't have just full on blue and black. So I'm just taking my finger and moving that ink around a little bit, the paint we just created. If it's too wet, you can just move some of that around, right? There we go. If it's not dark enough, there's no reason you can't go in there and go, I want a little bit more black and build it into your wet, right? Let's see what we get, because that's what Friday nights are all about. Let's just try it. We're not scared. Well, some of you might be like looking at this going, what the heck? I love her rainbow background. What is she doing here? She's going to wreck it all. Vicky's going to wreck the things. And it's okay. Let me test it. Let's see what we get. It'll be fabulous or it'll be a hot mess, but you know I'll find a solution for it if it is a hot mess. So, and I am nervous because I do have to line this up and let's see, did I put, if it feels really, really wet, just get some of the water off of it there. And now it'll be a little bit easier to manage. Okay. Let's try it. Let's see what we get cleaning up now because black, I don't want it everywhere. Because, right, I can be crazy, but I can't be too crazy. I'm not going to lie. So let's put this down and let's see what we're going to get. I'm going to put a little bit more black up in that corner. And a little bit up here. Let's see. I'm going to try it. Here I go. I'm going in. I'm going in. I've got to line it up a little bit. I'm okay if it's offset a little bit. Let's see what we get. Are you scared for me? So press it in a little bit. Work that in a little bit. Have a cleanish paper towel. Who's scared? Who's scared? Who's scared of what kind of results we're going to get here? So, you know, paper is porous. So I'm letting that kind of pool a little bit and soak into my paper. I'm not pressing really hard because I don't want it to come out in my color. You're excited. I'm not scared. Where does Halloween fall this week? How are we? We need to do a, a Friday night or a live that is like Halloween related. And I feel like all of us need to either wear a funky um, Halloween earrings or something. And the other thing you need to do is download Snapchat just so you can take pictures with Snapchat filters that day so we have Halloween photos to scrapbook. Because I, I won't have a costume, but I always go in. They have the best uh, Snapchat filters, right? Are you, ex are you still out there, Natalie? Are you excited for this? It's on a Sunday. So we can do the Friday before, right? So everybody has to download Snapchat just to use their Halloween filters. You probably can get some on Instagram too. But you know we're going to have so much fun posting our Snapchat filters. Let's see what we got. I'm looking. I'm peeking. Oh my goodness. I think you're going to love this. Are you ready? Are you ready for the reveal? I'm just given it so you got to watch right because the longer you let this sit uh, part of me wants to let it sit for a minute longer okay but i'm moving it because then at least that oh you're gonna love this so by moving it all of the fluid underneath is going in and making a new texture so we got to let it dry for a second. So I'm going to move this aside for a second. 
you get why I'm not lifting it right away, right? Because I want some of this color to still pool in here and create these secondary patterns. Can you see it? Like the little bubbles of color in here? I'm not sure if Nat is still here. Is she still here? She's going to love this. This is going to be right up Natalie Alley. We got to let that black pool. Oh, it's going to be so pretty. You're going to love this. So we need to do a version of this for a card because, right, we need to make a card. Candy corn. No, Kimberly. No. <laughs> what is my, what's everyone's favorite um, Halloween candy? And you can love candy corn. And here's the thing, Kimberly, you can have all of my candy corn. I just, and I know this is like a conversation everybody has. But candy corn to me just tastes like wax sugar. Like what is the flavor of candy corn? And I laugh when Dawn was here. She, we talked about this before and she said sadness. And I almost peed my pants. She said that the flavor of candy corn was sadness. And I laughed very hard because that was funny. That was a very clever thing. Um, what is my favorite Halloween candy? Tootsie Rolls. I love Tootsie Rolls and potato chips. And you need to go, Bev, between sweet and salty, right? But, oh, Starburst and mini chocolate bars. What is your favorite mini chocolate bar? I like a Kit Kat. I like candy corn, but the pumpkins are made of Satan spit. <laughs> Oh, I do like Reese's. Yeah. Mix candy corn with salted peanuts. No. Oh, Julie Ann Bennett, you do not like molasses kisses. Can I tell you something? That would be the thing that I would throw away at the bottom of my candy bowl. Like I would have to be in a really rough way. I'm, I'm going to lift this and show you guys. Are you ready? I'd have to be in a really rough way to enjoy molasses kisses. Sorry, we can still be friends, but that is not a favorite of mine. Look how fun that is. So, uh, totally digging this. And now it's, but nothing happened there. We gotta fix that. Let's add a little water. Let's see what happens. This is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna dry this layer and I'm gonna put that down for a second layer because I'm liking it, but I want a little bit more depth. Wonder bar. Yes, dandy. Wunderbar. Oh my goodness. And my American friends are probably not going to have any clue what a wonder bar is. But a wonder bar is delicious, chewy caramel peanut butter in the middle of chocolate but it's got like crunchy chunks in it too. It is the most freaking phenomenal chocolate bar. I forgot about Wonder Bar. I don't eat any of that now, so I never remember those things. I love this, but I need to go in now with one more layer. So here we go. So let's look at where we didn't get any color. And it was right here. So this section of my stencil, and I can see it on there. So I'm going to just deposit a little bit of color. Where was it? No. Right here. I think around here, and I can see I didn't press very hard. So let's just put a couple little areas so we can get a little bit more darkness in some areas. Don't forget, gel crayons are very faint. They are not super pigmented like the art crayons are, but the kind of magical thing is, is they um, will go on the plastic where an art crayon would not, it'd be very hard to get it on here. It'll work, but won't go on as easy. So let's use my finger. I think my daughter just left. She used to come down and say bye or say hello to us. 
we'll have to give Devin a hard time. So last year, Rich and I had gone to Niagara-on-the-Lake for our anniversary. And I'm very sad that I'm not going to be in Nova Scotia for my anniversary this year. Because that was my plan. And darn flights were way too much money, so it didn't happen. Okay. How are we doing? Oh, I want Wonder Bars now. Uh, what happened to the good Cadbury chocolate peanut Easter eggs? What the heck is that? I use the art crayon, not the gel crayon. Oops. Did it work though, Irene? If you could, if it worked, there's right. I told you, you can use anything. So I'm going to try to get one more layer of black. And I want to line this up the best that I can. And remember, I had to press into this area. There was no pigment around here. So I want the contrast. So I'm putting some down in here. Working it in. And let's see what we get. And like I said, if you set this aside to dry, like let it sit in there, you would get like a whole bunch of kind of different banding of color. But for time's sake, we will just move on because I would still like to do another one and we'll do a totally different stencil combination for a card, smaller scale. And let's see what we got. Still nothing right up around here a little bit. So I'm going to press that down for a second right around there. And just go with it now. What do you think, friends? It's fun, right? And now I'm just going to let this dry. So a little bit of dirty rainbow going on. I'm reading your comments. So I'll set that aside to dry, but I love it. We could still go on here and we could still layer some gold glaze or whatever you want to do, but I'm loving this. And sometimes, right, we talk about just knowing when to stop and I'm going to stop. I think with the next one, though, do you guys want me to use some Distress Ink on it instead for the card? Or go in with Art Crayon? You tell me what you would like. So I will definitely be making a layout. And do you see, like, when we do these patterns like this, like, it is very um, different focus, right? You love the gray with the bright hearts. Me too. I just think it makes it pop. So now we'll do a card version of this with a smaller pattern. And we can use a gel crayon, but here's the whole thing. Um, hi, Seth. How are you? Um, Seth After is in the house. I love him. If you are not familiar with Seth, you want to go check him out. He does the most beautiful mixed media art. And he's a wonderful human being. I'm just getting up because we were talking about this when I was watching Seth live. Seth is in of the um, school of not cleaning his stencils. And Seth, I am in the school of I had to get up and put water on my stencil. <laughs> because Seth, I cannot leave a dirty stencil. I can't. I'm crazy. And I know it's, it's almost just doesn't even make sense in the world of mixed media because um, 
most mixed media artists, I think, are more of the school of just layering and using the stencil over and over again. And I am a wacko. I can't not clean the stuff up. Like that bothers me. <laughs> I love it. You cannot clean a stencil, see? And Seth invited me to come and see him in New York tonight. He doesn't remember doing it, but I am gonna go and see Seth and he's gonna take me all over the city and we're gonna laugh and we're gonna make art together. Yeah, Seth doesn't know, but he invited me tonight when I was watching his live question. Uh, tell us again how you clean your stencil brush so it doesn't smell like a dead horse fart. I sure can. So with my stencil brushes, I never submerse the whole thing in water. Um, I just clean the ends. So let's say I'm done with my stencil brush for tonight, okay? I would take it and I mist it with water and I will clean it until no pigment is coming off of my stencil brush. Because it is true facts when, if you are new here and she says, did she just say dead horse fart? Yes, she did. Because that is what a whole bag of wet stencil brushes, a Ziploc bag sealed shut, smells like when you open it out of your suitcase. It will smell like a dead horse fart. So when you're cleaning them, don't put soap on it and then do this because then it's Mr. Bubbles on top of it. So when you get it to the point that no pigments coming off and your brush is pretty wet and you will find your brush, your bristles may be like splayed out. So what I do is take a dry paper towel. This one is, let's pretend it's clean and dry. And then I roll it really tight like this. And you could do this with paintbrushes too, if your paintbrush is losing its shape. And then I just leave it to dry like that. And when you come back the next day, I just reuse the paper towel, but your, your stencil brush will have its shape back and will be clean, okay? So uh, mind you, you would have to know what that smells like. You know what it smells like, Marianne? These wet and in a Ziploc bag. That is what a dead horse fart would smell like. I just know it. I have never smelt a dead horse fart, but I have to believe that that's what it would smell like. And it's not pleasant at all. Not pleasant at all. Like terrible smell. So um, that's how I clean them and then roll them. You will find around my room, like a whole bunch of rolled pieces of paper towel like this, because that is how I put them away but I do not submerge them in water because, you know, I never know, like there's probably adhesive in here and pressure holding this uh, submerged, this whole thing in water. The paint could start coming off the handle and your brushes uh, are going to be very wet for a long time and you don't need it, right? You just need to clean really the ends. All the pigment is pretty much just sitting on the end. Socks are now nine runs. Who are they playing, Lynn? I do not watch the baseballs. I do not watch the sports. Only hockey. Because, you know, I'm Canadian. How can you not watch hockey? There'd be something wrong with you to not at least know something about hockey. But um, I don't watch the sports. My mother loves baseball. She is a Blue Jays fan. But this is a funny thing because this did not happen until probably the last five years. She used to hate baseball. So I laugh at my mother now because she is like all up in watching the Blue Jays. And I'm like, who are you? And what did you do with my mother? My mother's not a baseball fan. So let's discuss. So this is kind of dirty, but it won't matter. Um, for the our card bases, I think tonight. So we have two options. You can cut the size that you want and you could mask the edges down to your craft mat and do that. Hi, Greta Hammond. You could come and ride with Wade to know if it really smells like a dead horse fart. Greta's husband is a large animal vet. So Wade, I will send you a stencil brush, in wet one in a Ziploc bag. I will send it to, to Greta. And then Wade has to open the bag and tell me if it smells like a dead horse fart. 
So we will do a little science experiment, but I know I'm, I know I'm right. Cause I, I don't know if this is a horse hair or what these bristles are, but it smells fine right now. But if you leave it wet in a bag, it's a whole other story. So for our card bases, you could do a whole background, cut it out, or you could uh, cut the size that you want, mask it. So you have a white frame and make your art in the middle. Or Jason just asked, is that Vicky? Vicky Booten? Yes, Jason, it is. How are you? Are you having a good evening? I love Dawn. She is one of my favorite human beings in this whole world. I absolutely love her. Um, want us to send you some horse manure? No, I'm good. We have lots of that around here. And that is not what a good friend would do, right? Hi, New Brunswick, Canada here. Neat show. Just found you tonight. I'm crafting along. I love it, Shelly. And do you know that my son's best friend's mom is, she her name is Shelly Robinson, but she's Shelly with an E after or before the Y. So I love that. Welcome. I'm so glad you found us. Shh, make it a surprise. Denise is a troublemaker. Denise is a troublemaker. I love it that she's saying to Greta, yes, send her some horse poop. No, you can send me some giant jelly beans when I'm done my uh, Gina Livy. Where Greta lives, she has a candy store that has jelly beans that are this big. And they have a bag that are cherry and coconut mix. They're white and red. And if you've ever had a coconut jelly bean is the best thing in the world. And like, how big are they, Greta? Like that, do you think? Like the size of a quarter? Oh my goodness, put it in a card. Yeah, that'd be an interesting scratch and sniff, wouldn't it, Michelle? And then I'll make sure to forward it to you <laughs> when I'm done with my poop card. Okay, so let's pick our pattern. This I think could be fun, but with this one, um, I might not layer it. Um, I would enjoy giant jelly beans. I'll have to make sure because Greta just found me some new Ray Dunn mugs, surprise, surprise, that she's sending me. So Greta, I need some jelly beans. I need those, but I won't open them until I'm allowed to eat it. But uh, you must come with the jelly beans. Greta's going to hop on an airplane and she will hand deliver me the jelly beans. So do we want to do another slimline card next week? How about we do two backgrounds and um, remind me what size is a slimline? Jumbo jelly beans. Oh, they're the best thing in the world. Wait, what's the name of that candy store? What is that candy store, Greta? Cherry and coconut, Greta. Right? I'll go in the morning because she is the best friend in the world. Greta and I have been, she is probably one of my longest scrapbooking friends. Eight by three. Thank you, Josie. I hope you're feeling better. Eight by three. So I want this to be um, two and let's do this two and three quarters by seven and three quarters. Do we want to do that? Oh, three and a half. Okay, so we'll do this. We'll do three by eight then. Thank you. Three by eight. I'm going to do one of those. See, it's called the Wakarusa Dime Store. Where is Where do you live again, Greta? I don't remember what your um, town is called. But it is a really fun um, candy store. I love it. And so that's going to be my, because you know I like to do my mixed media and then layer it on the card size. So there's going to be one that we're going to do. And what other card size would you like me to do? Five by seven? Cherry are the best. The cherry and the coconut. That is my favorite. Um, so we will do. I'm going to cut this. One, two, four and three quarters. By four and three quarters. By six and three quarters. And we'll do two. You know, I like five by seven cards just because I like lots of area to work in. So we can do two simultaneously. How about that? 
And I'm going to find some kind of tape to mask this. You don't have to mask this either. She lives in Wakarusa. Isn't that funny? Vicky Dork. But yes, those jelly beans. Oh my goodness. I dream of those. Although, you know, it's funny. It's been so long since I've had sugar that I probably will only be able to eat two jelly beans, but I will enjoy them thoroughly. So sorry, my head's in here. I want to be able to line that up ish. Okay. You like my ring tonight? So this ring is supposed to be like when my body temperature changes, it changes color. I bought it on one of the islands on one of my cruises. Um, but it's like every kind of mood ring that I, um, if you mask, you're going to have a double border. I'm okay with that. Is that all right, Don? Can I, it'll be all right, right? So let's do one with the double border and the other one we won't mask. How about that? I just like my clean edge. Um, but I think I have a black sole because it, like watch, when I take it off, it'll go a different color. So it's it'll go green. It goes green and red and whatever the stone is that I bought. But it is like a mood ring. <sighs> So let's see when I, uh... no, you're good. You're good. Cause that, that is true facts. What you're telling me, Don, but yes, it goes different colors, but maybe, like I said, um, I think I have a black heart, my a mood changing ring, but it's not like a mood ring like that. It's some kind of stone, but there again, I did buy it in like Cozumel or somewhere. So it might actually not be worth anything. I could have, I could have paid three hundred dollars for it and it's like not anything right but i like it it's pretty but it does can you see it's starting to change so um and in the light like when you're out in the sun it will go bright green it is like a 70s thing right and then we'll do this one with no border all right so what do you want to see flowers on one or I want to do polka dots. I love this stencil. So are we okay if I do this on this one? But I am going to... Are we okay if we do this on this one? I think that looks good. It's centered. And you guys, you wanted to see Distress Ink, right? To the same technique. Let's just pick. Um, I have some oxides here. So let's do what I have and then I'll grab. So I have a yellow. I have a yellow. What else do we need? Let's do some worn lipstick, a spice marmalade. Oh, you guys, on this one, I'll do fall color rainbow, okay? So let's see, we'll do like fallish rainbow. So there we have our yellow, orange, pink. We need a purple and a blue, right? So let's go with, I'm not gonna do traditional necessarily. I'm gonna do that cause I like it. And then we need purpley color. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, I'm going to do this. Wilted violet. So I have mustard seed, twisted citron. I have peacock feather, spice marmalade, and worn lipstick. And now... I need to just grab stuff. So these are all clean, even though they're stained. I just washed them. 
because I'm not organized enough to have a thing for each thing. Yes, it might be that stone. Amma, Amma light. It could be. Okay, let's go in with some mustard seed. And this should go pretty quick. Okay, so let's do it with some mustard seed. A little bit, because there's not a lot of space on here, right? So mustard seed, done. Let's get a new one and go in now with our spice marmalade. First mama laid. And then I'll do distress ink on this one, but regular distress, okay? So let's go in with some worn lipstick. And you see I am changing my blending foam for each color because you don't want to cross-contaminate your oxides. It is not as important with regular distress. We're getting a very nice blend. So let's think of what we have left, right? Oops, look what I just did. Don't do that. I should have tacked this down, but I didn't because I just never make things easy for myself. Well, let's just line that up again. Ugh. There is close enough. For, oh, perfect. Okay. So that one was worn lipstick. It's very pretty. I'm very much digging that. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Very pretty. And then let's go in with a little bit of wilted violet and we will see if this color is going to be a little bit too much, which it might be, but I'm going with it anyway. Okay, so let's go in and your blending tool is starting to move before we've even got it on the paper. And did you see I loaded it and I'm tapping off on a scrap piece just so I don't want this color to be way too vibrant in comparison to what we have going on here. So I'm going to really over blend this and into my pink a little bit. But you know oxides will not, they'll blend beautifully together, but you aren't going to get that layery color like you would with regular Distress. Just different. Okay. Very pretty. Totally digging this. Grunge it up. I will grunge it up when I put the gray layer on, right? So this layer I want very vibrant. And then when I put my gray layer, because I'm totally going to go in here with a gray for this one, that's where my grunge will come in. And here's the other thing that I came to realize that I will do the grungy stuff, but it is not where my heart is. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like, I'll do that stuff, but then I'll be like, it is never, I think you guys will like it. Like, sometimes I do that stuff. I think I need a blue. I'm going to go blue. I'm not going to do this one. That I will do it, and then I'll be like, hmm. I wish that I would have used brighter colors it's just not you know what i mean i do it but it's not my thing i am definitely rainbows and butterflies i'm gonna go salty ocean instead 
I'm gonna do salty ocean instead. Do you know what I'm talking about? Throw some black on it. Have you, did you just get here? Natalie, did you see the hearts with the black? So I'm gonna tap some of that off, make sure my tool isn't too wet. And let's blend our blue in with the purple. But you know, like I, some things I guess I do, I'm all right with a kind of like um, earthier approach. But sometimes, oops, did it again, freaking moved it again, ding dong. Um, that I like a vintage look, but I've come to realize I am not, like I love to watch Tim and this is why I think his product is awesome is we have totally different styles. And there are a lot of people on his creative team that are more what I do. Like I like vintage and I love what he comes out with, but I never lean towards ever brown. You never, I probably, how often do you ever see me use brown? And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my aesthetic, you know what I mean? I try to embrace the grunge, but it usually turns into hot mess. Yes, but it's but it's a fun hot mess. I enjoy it. I just never know. Like maybe other people looking at it will love it, but I always think that's exactly you hit the nail on the head. Don, I'll look at it and think nobody's going to like this. I think it looks ugly, right? So, uh, and that's probably just me. That's probably not the case at all. People might like it. But yeah, it's a hard thing. And you know I'll do it with you guys because I like to show all different styles. But yeah, it can be tough. Totally digging this. Ready for the reveal? Isn't that pretty? So I'm going to try to place a stencil again. I got to be careful this time. I better mark my stencil off. So let's do that right now when you're using a big stencil on a small piece for the second layer so it makes it easier right when I come in to position this is to know where I need to add the color and where I need to layer it back down so yeah and it's not anything like I will look at other people's art that they use earthier colors and be like that's absolutely beautiful it just I struggle right it's not um, where my comfort zone, I guess, is. So now I'm going to watermark this. So I'm going to do this one a little differently because I want it to be more drippy. So let's start with that. A little bit of watermarking. Here, I'll go in with my water bottle a little. Because this is the magic with Distress Ink. They are very water reactive. Take my clean paper towel. Lift up my water and my pigment. Hi, Libby. Libby was here earlier. Did you go somewhere for a little bit, Lib? Fun, right? Oh, look at, look at that, Irene. Right? How fun. I should have taken a second piece of paper and picked that pigment up. So if you haven't done it yet, don't use paper towel. Put a card down on it and pick that up. I love it. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do before the next layer. Are you ready? I'm going to try something. Let's see if we can have some success. So I would like to try to take my script stamp and stamp through it. And if the stencil is not too thick, we might get a little bit of color de deposited. I'm going to take a gray. I'm going to go in with gray. I don't want to go in with a pigment. And we're going to use black soot for Natalie. Let's try hickory smoke. Let's see what we get. So this is either going to work or it's not, but let me try it first. Okay. You've been listening all night, just not typing. Um, what's going on with the snake lib? Have you seen your snake? 
Did you get a camera? I haven't been on the interwebs, so I don't know if you've posted anything. So I'm pressing really hard and hoping it will go through the stencil. Ooh, I'm getting some of it, but not much. So I'm going to try to position a little bit in there. So I think I'm getting a little bit, but not much. Okay, let's see. I'm going to press really hard. Eating and creating at the same time. Couscous with fresh dill and a pork cutlet with yogurt and dill sauce. That sounds delicious. Did you make that all yourself? So I am just going now and selectively trying to add some of this script stamp in here. Oops, that's all right. I just pressed too hard. That's all right. What stencil is this? It is a um, crafter's workshop stencil. I don't know what the name is, but if I can find this one, I'm going to be adding it to my store when I do my next order because I'm definitely loving it. But one of mine is similar to this too. It's just not as big. All right. So I let's lift it. Okay, so we added just a little touch of gray script in there. And now I'm going to go in and put that black in. So I'm going to freak some of you out right now. But let's do it. So I know that this is my work area, right? So I am going to take the black soot. I'm going to clean the front of that stencil off, though, because I don't want to deposit that color on my rainbow again when I have to rub the black soot. So let's just give that a wipe. And now we're going to rub black soot in this area. And I'm cleaning up because it drives me crazy when I'm finished these lives and I have crap everywhere. I don't know. Seth has probably left the building, but see Seth, I have to clean as I go because it literally will make me start to twitch. I am who I am, right? A wackadoo. That's what I am. Totally wackadoodle. There we go. Vicky is happier. It's away. Okay. Oh my goodness. Enter studio. What did I do? Give me a second, friends. I don't know what I did. I left the studio. Oh, all I was trying to do was so be, ooh, mute this because it'll make you deaf. I'm coming back. There we are. Oh, did she, did the snake pass? It's a very good story about Libby's snake. Libby had um, some type of snake living underneath. She's in Georgia and a snake living underneath her um, porch. That was a very important snake ecologically. So she was a very important snake that people studied and they had come and put a tracker on her snake, but they hadn't seen movement for the snake for a while. So um, it was a, what kind, some kind of brown snake or something that was super important and kind of rare, I believe. So there were um, students or something that came to study her snake and they had had movement and they weren't sure if she lost the tracker, but. Um, I'm sure most on here don't want to hear about snakes, but she was a good snake. Sure, that it's an interesting story, right? I'm still here and it drives me crazy at the end of lives too. I can barely see the table so I can relate. I'm crazy. I can't help it. But I'm glad you're a little bit crazy too, Seth. So I'm going to rub some black soot oxide ink. And this is making Natalie happy wherever she is on the interwebs right now. So it, it looks like a hot mess right now, but when we go and put some water on here, this is going to pool and bead and be beautiful, okay? So because I don't wanna transfer this where I don't want it, 
I'm going to clean that up and I'm going to put a paper towel so it will take the um, water instead of it pooling on my non-porous craft mat, right? And let's start making some magic here. Again, we don't want this too wet because it will run into all of our rainbow. So I might do this and then I might move it around a little bit. An Eastern King snake. They eat venomous snakes like copperhead, which is awesome. Not rare, just one to be happy to have around. So it's you want that around your property. They were studying her as part of a science project to see how urbanization impacts wildlife. They use king snakes as a subject. And I was, when um, Libby was telling the story, I was freaking out because you know us people who don't live in an area that have poisonous snakes. That's like, it freaks me out, right? That you live somewhere that would have a freaking copperhead. I'm like, oh my goodness. And then loved following the story, right? So are you ready? I'm excited. Let's see what happens now when we go and add some black on here. This is going to be a little trickier for me to line up, but I use my guides there. So before I commit and don't press too hard, make, can you guys see? Yes. So now I've just got to see where this lines up and I'm going to start kind of at the top. If it is not perfect i am also completely okay with that because i think it will add to the charm for it to be a little offset so i'm letting because paper is a sponge right so i'm letting this soak in a bit before i go and add any pressure and i'm also going to make a little wick to wick up that extra um, pigment that's come up here that i don't want in my rainbow Remember, like this is me being a little crazy and embracing the dark side. But I have to still admit <laughs> that uh, I'm here sleeping too. It's, it's not even that bad for me, Nat. Have you been working hard? Natalie and I usually talk a couple of times a week. And we have both been so busy working that we haven't really touched base. So I don't know what Nat's been working on or what's been happening in her life. So I feel bad about that. That's just kind of the case these days, isn't it? Sometimes we are a little out of touch with our friends. So I'm gonna take this and press down. Ooh, I'm afraid, right? Because if we press too hard, it's gonna, just pop in all over the place. So we're letting it marinate a little bit and soak into the paper because you know what's going to happen. When I go to lift this, all the moisture is going to get pulled into the middle. But because this is Distress Ink, I'm going to peek before I reveal. Are you ready? I'm showing you. Oh, I love it. Isn't that fun? So even in some areas that I think the contrast of the white is a little too much, look it. And I didn't want to miss what Libby was saying about her snake. We have at least five kinds of venomous snakes in Georgia. Well, Libby, at one point I was thinking I'd come and visit you and now I have changed my mind. <laughs> I don't like snakes or spiders or sharks. Okay, I'm going to tap a little bit into some of this area. Okay, so just where that contrast is, I would like to soften it a bit because I feel like it needs a little bit more pigment so that our rainbow pops. I want rainbow to take the center stage. So I'm bleeding some of that color into these really white areas. Not all of them. And do you notice, because that first layer is there, that you still see contrast. I'll show you when I'll lift the card up.
it just um, is softening it a little bit. Softening it a little bit. I uh, was never a fan of snakes, but this was just a really cool thing that I learned about happy for my porch to be her home. Yeah, I think it is awesome. Are there snakes in Florida, Don? Like I would, but you have gators there, man. If you live anywhere near the water, you can't let your dogs out, right? Because can't the gators, like don't gators eat people's pets? And you know, so this girl living in Ontario, um, you might laugh because it's like, yeah, I don't really see where I live gators all that much, Vicky. But of course, I just know you're in Florida. So I just think like gators are walking down the streets. It's like in Australia, I just figure like there's kangaroos and koala bears everywhere, right? And I'm sure my friends there are like, yeah, no, Vicky, that's not how it works. Okay, I'm going to stop messing with that because now I'm afraid I'm wrecking it. Step away. Gators will eat your tiny dog, but he's got to be starving. Okay, so they don't just eat. And sharks, freaking Don. Stop already. I'm going to freak out. But isn't this fun? What do you guys think? So what are your thoughts on this? So you see how I didn't press very much in this area. So it is what it is. I'm going to actually, let's lift the pigment because that's what I'm feeling needs to happen. So I'm either going to wreck this or it's going to look really cool. Let's see. Yeah, I like that better. I did not want those pools of really black. So I am very happy now with that result. Fun, right? Look at that. And you know, my thoughts on this is I don't want to waste what's on the back of this card. So I have a little bit of paper here. So let's take this and do a very quick background for maybe a third card. Okay, so we have all this pigment on here. Let's miss the heck out of it. Let's lay it on this background. Okay, we're going to pick the extra moisture up with a paper towel. Like this. And we're going to brayer it to get it into the paper. Okay. And now watch this very quick background where we can use some of my glaze. What color do we want? Which metallic? Okay, so do you want me to go in with silver or all th silver and gold? We have coyotes. Yeah, we have coyotes too. Um, so I'm going to quickly take one of what... I don't even know what color this is going to be. It's whatever is on my ink blending tool. Okay. Whatever I pick up. I'm going to mist it with a little bit of water. And let's just see what colors we get. Just a little bit of color. I just want to deposit some color on the background. A little bit. And now I'm just, I have a little bit of regular peacock feather. So let's just blend a little bit of that in here for contrast in our open areas. Okay. We have that going on. What else do I have here? Oh, how about a little aged patina too? A little bit. And now we're going to go in here with some silver. And I just opened a brand new one. We'll do silver and gold, okay? Silver and gold, silver and gold. I don't know what else Burl Ives says in that song. 
I just know silver and gold. And I don't, is that Rudolph that that song is in Rudolph? But you knew, like, look, you were saying that and I knew exactly what you're talking about. Libby, try trying to spot the elusive Florida man. What is that? What are we talking about now? Okay. Okay, so silver is going to go on here now. You ready? Try not to get my other card. Dirty. We just cleaned that stencil brush. I think this is the one. Okay. So I've run out of real estate. So let's take glaze. So why I love my glazes. If you're not familiar with this, and I got to find a palette knife because I had one here and I don't know what I put where I put it. So let me grab one of the 10 palette knives I have. Is that it is a texture paste. See? Nice, thick. Oh, look at that. Um, it can go on as a texture paste, which I'm going to use it as a texture paste, but I can also use it with my stencil brush. And this is brand new, so it's nice and juicy. Right? And we can put a thin layer of silver. And then we can also put a textural layer of silver. So it, this is going to be very pretty. So let's go in here. And it will also pick up some of this Distress Ink because Distress Ink is water soluble and this is wet. So if I blended this, I could actually make a tinted silvery blue color as well. So let, I just want some silver in here and then we'll put some texture on here as well. So I like it to go in kind of thin and um, blended. But then our last step will be also to take it like a texture paste and let's just put some, not everywhere, but just put this layer of funky silver texture. And then we can make a card out of this next week as well. Maybe a little up here. And then I'll just cut it out of the section I like the best. Ready? Let's see the reveal. And then we clean our tools right away because this is one tool that even though we were all teasing about we clean some things and we don't clean others. I clean my palette knife because I want that um, clean edge. So I will clean that. Put that away. Are we ready? Let's see. What are we going to get? So we have that gray, pretty black background where we use the dirty stencil. And then we have layers of texture in silver, the blue. Very pretty and subtle, right? And again, because we don't waste anything, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take all that silver we just used, right? Make sure we're on the right side. That's going to be the base of this card. So we're going to mist the heck out of this. Now, the only thing, you got to work fast because this is a um, texture paste. You know how we could let ink sit on here pretty much indefinitely? This could glue a little bit to your um, background, right? Because it is um, sticky, textural, sticky. So, but let's find it. It's hard to see it, but I'm thinking it's right here. Okay, again, because we don't want to waste anything. So that's my thought process here is I would love now to have that silver as the base of this layout. Do we still want rainbow on this, friends? But maybe rainbow in like a little bit of an earthier? Okay, so now we gotta work fast. So now I'm gonna use Distress. So what colors do I have here? This is what I'm using so I don't have to get up. So I have Rustic Wilderness. Oh, look it. I might have rainbowish colors. Oh, seedless preserves. And look at some of this is a little earthier. So let's go in with some of this. Let's grab some foam and let's work fast ish. 
So let's do fossilized amber. Fossilized amber. Okay. Spice marmalade using the same tool. It's a little earthier. Okay. Let's go in with some picked raspberry. I'm not changing my tool, my ink blending tool. So look at this is uh, definitely got a little bit, bit more of an earthy vibe. Okay. Do do going into purple. Not changing my tool, so whatever color I get is going to be a little dirtier, and we're totally going to go with that. Okay. And now, which, ooh, which blue do you want? Do you want prize ribbon or blueprint sketch? Prize ribbon or blueprint sketch? I'm just taking, I'm not cleaning it. I'm just pressing it on. So pick one. Whoever says it first, prize ribbon or blueprint sketch? I'm waiting. One of you. Blueprint. Thanks, Dion. Okay, don't want it too dark. Let's go in there. Got to work pretty fast, though, okay? Because I want to make sure that I don't glue my um, stencil down here with this wet. Okay, and then let's go in with some rustic, rustic wilderness. Very nice, right? Let's do some little bit of watermarking just because we can. And I feel like when you're using distress ink, it is the easiest thing to do. And remember, Irene, what I told us is just to test it. Look at why clean that up with a paper towel. Let's see what we get when we pick up the water with a card and then we can use this for another card. <gasps> yes, we can. What else do I have here? Do I not have another piece of foundations anywhere? Do I? Oh, remember last week's card? I'll just use this piece of it. Here we go. And then I'll use a paper towel. But let's pick up that extra ink. Oh, I love it. Right there. Okay. Let's see. Please don't stick to the paper. Mm. Ah. A little bit it tore a little bit right there but we will pretend it didn't happen see because this will start to get sticky as it dries so you got to work fast 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 so we did have a little bit of mishap on here but guess what i'll do let's try to fix it a bit with that paintbrush and a little bit of silver Doo -doo. oh my goodness this probably is one of my favorites so I'm going to show you in a second after we dry this, okay? So um, let's take a little bit of the silver, and I'm just going to paint it in where I mucked it up. Because it did um, stick. you got to work fast. Because actually the thicker the areas are where the silver was, the uh, more chance you have of it sticking to your background, but I'm fixing it. So just make sure that you just kind of brush that in a little bit, just where the paper tore a bit. And I'm fine with that. When it dries, we just have a little bit more silvery goodness. Oh my goodness, this is so pretty. I cannot wait to dry this and show you. Okay. Heat gun time. Oh my goodness. We were talking about like, right. That I was like, Oh, I don't the earthy sometimes. Now this earthy is totally up my alley. 
because it can be earthy and not be like um, brown, right? Right, right, right. Okay, let's heat it. I might take my um, tape off first though. And remember, keep the tape tight to your surface so you don't tear it because this is not painter's tape. So if I keep it very close, I don't run the risk of ripping my paper, especially because some of the edges are white. So this is also the magic of foundations paper, right? Um, you could do this with watercolor. It might bleed a little under your stencil because you have ridges on your watercolor paper, whereas foundations paper is flat, right? It's smooth. You're gonna love this. So I hope you enjoyed tonight so far. Like I um, will show you all of the things we've made. This is gonna make the prettiest card. I need to go shopping for some um, sentiment dies. So you guys have to share with me, my card making friends, a list of your favorite sentiment dies. Because it is the one thing I've decided as a mix, new mixed media card maker, the one thing Vicki Boot needs are a whole whack of sentiment dies. So just let me take a little bit of the moisture out and then I'm going to let this dry by itself. Um, this has to be one of my favorite things. This, what we just did here. So when you look, see, I can see a couple torn areas I will fix or sand it a little bit, but it is so pretty. Can you see that with this metallic on it? And the silver is one of my slowest selling of the glazes. Um, and I have to say that uh, Gina K, I have a bunch of Gina K ones. So I will go and I love Gina K. So I will go check out uh, Kathy's as well. So, but I do, I need a whole whack of sentiment dies and I like very scripty or very bold. So I have, we'll go and look at my friends at Hero Arts and I will go and look at um, Kathy and I will go look at, Don. do you do dyes? Do you have sentiment dyes? But yes, I need, that's the one thing I'm going to be ordering this week because I keep talking about it and um, I really need sentiment dyes. So, um, and I like bold and scripty. I think I fixed it now, but let's put a little bit more silver in here because there's not a lot going on. And blend that out a little bit maybe. I am in love with this. Yes, all my mediums are actually, I just put on sale this week. So on vickybooten.com, all of them are there. And if it says sold out, just give me a minute. I'll go check tonight because I can restock. I have them of all my art crayons, all my glazes, stencil brushes. So I have a whole bunch of orders that came through yesterday that I have filled and I will get the postage together for them tomorrow. That's what I'm working on tomorrow. And then I'm taking the rest of the weekend off for, um, for Thanksgiving. So I'm going to show you what we've made. Are you ready? And I will read all of this stuff. Silver is your favorite glaze. I love that, Lisa. But isn't it funny? Gold, obviously, why gold would be, it's a big seller because it's very pretty. Iridescent, the reason a lot of people, like I tell you, the first one I would buy is the iridescent because all it is is sparkly like mica right? But it um, is perfect for tinting any of your inks. So look at, let's do it on a color that you guys will see. So if I take iridescent and mix it with 
any water soluble ink there you go i just made my own mica like tinted prettiness and i'll show you i'll pick this up on paper and you'll see what i'm talking about so this is why i love iridescent because it's just oh do you see it it's like remember i told you it is like um sparkly happy unicorn tears but they're tears of joy they're not tears of sorrow or pain but it is it's like unicorn sparkle the iridescent is ah, i love it so let me pick some of that up i'll do it on the back side of this card and you will see what that looks like it's not wet enough so let's just wet that now and it is diamond sparkle. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. So yeah, I love it. So that's why I love iridescent. And you can do it as texture paste too, right? You could mix the um, colors in with the uh, iridescent as a texture paste and run it through a stencil like this. Just grab a stencil. Just grab a stencil. And I will show you. So let's put some seedless preserves down. Okay, Riri, right? Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Do you mix your uh, texture paste with iridescent glaze? I sure can, Dion. Look it. Okay. So as a thick, full-on paste, look what's happening right before your eyes. There you go. We just made iridescent texture paste tinted with seedless preserves. There you go. Oh my gosh, that color is like everything. Okay. And then, pablam. There you go. Texture paste. It's wet, so it's bleeding under there, but it is diamond beautifulness. <gasps> I love it. I want to see what happens right now. So what could we do? We know already. We could totally miss that and stamp it. But what happens if we, oh, yeah, let's make some of that seedless preserves leach out of there into our blue. Oh, it's so beautiful. Right, friends? So I'm talking about what would Debbie think? What, with my singing? She didn't think I was a whack job, but we all know that. And because we never waste. Can I show you something? So if I took this now, right? I have a mess everywhere, so let's just wipe it up. I hate wiping anything up and not using it on something, but look it. I just did it. Um... I could take my stencil brush and wet it. And now I could take this and use it as a tinted diamond purple beautifulness instead of cleaning it off on or in the sink. Here you go. And then usually because there was a little bit of an edge because the medium was a little thick. I will often take that and just soften my edges a little bit because I can. And when it dries, I'll wipe it off, but it is iridescent. It's iridescent, okay? I gotta clean this because now there's like little bits in there, but whatever. And when that dries, guess what I could do? I could go in here. Let's see if I can show you quick. Look what's happening right here. Do you see that magic? Like I am going to end up teaching a, a basic um, mixed media class. I think just like the um, uh, gel plate class, I am going to do a mixed media class of just the basics. Like literally what the best tools, all of the things. Because... I think it would be a fun class, but I want to show you something now, okay? So if I make sure this is dry, 
to the touch. And let's go in with, I don't know what will work here. Some mustard seed. Depending how thick this glaze is, it should resist the um, ink. So I should be able, depends though. Remember how thick it is? I should go be able to do this and then buff the pigment off and be able to bring that purple back to the top. See that? Because the glaze will resist the distress ink. So look what just happened right there. And this is just a cleanup sheet. So there you go. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to be doing this is what we're going to do up until the new year. So do you see how I was able to buff the yellow off of that so it wasn't a uh, uh, rusty color now? So all of that. And when this dries, it's going to be so fun. I can't really heat set this though. Okay. You can't heat set. There's like very few uh, textural mediums that you can heat set that will actually dry and not bubble because they're acrylic based. So it's like trying to heat plastic, right? It's going to bubble, but I'm going to take a little bit of the moisture out of what's um, beating around here and then just leave this to dry because I'd love you to see, I don't know if you can see the metallic in it. These mediums have been around for a long time, but I'm sure there are a lot of you out there who have resisted purchasing them because you're probably maybe a little afraid to use them or you think you have some other stuff that you don't need these. But it is one of these things that I love showing you that you don't only have to use stuff that has my name on it. You could mix this with Seth, Seth Apters, with Tim's stuff, with whatever you have and get some really great results. Because you know, oh, it's so pretty. Can you see that? <gasps> I love it so much. And I love that we added water and it, then it started to make the medium kind of melted in there. It's freaking awesome stuff. Awesome sauce. So let's talk about, um, I keep a set by the bed. Amy, you crazy, crazy lady. Oh, a set of, <laughs> I'm laughing. She meant headphones. I thought you meant you kept a set of mediums by the bed. And I was like, okay, okay, Amy. All right. I'm going to bring my camera down. I got to find all of the stuff now. We did a lot tonight. <laughs> I had no intention of doing all of this. And look at this is what it turns into. You never know what you're going to get in the boot and house on a Friday night. So, um, and I am disasters everywhere, Seth, if you're still here. And it's going to make me twitch. I got to put shit away. Oops, sorry. I said the S word. Are ready? Yeah, mediums by the bed. My hubby would be like, uh, that's new. <laughs> I can't wait to meet him, Valerie, when I'm allowed to come over the border. All right, so let's see the magic we made tonight. Was this everything? I think this was everything, right? Yes. Okay, so I will get my phone and I'm going to bring it closer. Are you ready? They eat people too. Who eats people? My goodness, what conversations are going on here tonight that I don't even know? Oh, <laughs> Patty, that's funny. So when we watch my friend Gina Livy, every time she swears on her lives, you drink water. So Patty was doing that. She was sipping water because I said shit. Um, what eats people? I don't know what eats people. I don't know if we're on a delay and we're talking about the the lizards that we talked about earlier or sharks or gators, but here I'm hoping you can see. Okay. 
And I don't know how um, in focus this is when I'm streaming, but I will photograph all of this before I um, create anything on top of it, okay? But you can, can you see the metallic in there? Right, oh, this one I'm loving. Isn't that fun, the contrast? And this part that started all of it, right? Our rainbow hearts. So that is what we made tonight. I'm gonna flip cameras, are you ready? Here we go. Hi. So we have a lot of fun going on. Lots of fun went on tonight. It was good. This one I, is one of my favorites, I have to say. Totally digging this with the silver. And this was just a result of cleaning the stencil. Don't waste what's on the stencil, right? Um, this one I love. I don't know. This like up here, they look like, like that looks like Halloween sky with a blood red moon and clouds. Um, I'll take pictures of the finished cards and stuff, but I'll take pictures of the background. So you see the step lining up next Friday. If you're new next Friday, I'll take all of these and we'll make cards and layouts out of them. Right. If I palette knifed your glaze on um, quite thick, will it dry? Yes. Yes, Libby, it will. It'll just take a little longer because it's plastic. So right. Like it's acrylic based. So just like if you painted acrylic paint on really thick, it needs to cure rather than dry. So you need to leave it for quite a while and it might have a little bit of sponginess to it, but it will dry, it's just gonna take a little while. And then we have the hearts and then the hearts, right? And this will be the layout. I'll create a layout on this next week. And then, um, I'm going to do a um, slimline card on this one. And then we will do another card on this one. So I will probably be very simple with what I do and maybe put like one little stamped element on there and then a big script word. Do you see what I'm saying? Like that's what I, I see like a, a long script word on here. Like smile, happy, celebrate, that kind of idea. And then we probably can make some kind of card out of this one too, couldn't we? Right, when it dries, I love it. So I hope that was fun. Does anybody have any questions? This is a time now to ask me because I'm looking right at them, right at them, right at the screen. So if you have any questions, if you're new here, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Vicki Booten and nice to meet you. And I do these every Friday. Oh, we forgot this one, friends. We weren't done. Look at, we made this one too with the silver, remember? With the dirty stencil. So we have lots that we can make stuff out of next week. Um, what did Natalie say? You need sentiment dyes. 100% Natalie, I need to. You have to send me pictures of some of your favorite. I slept through that one. What are you doing, Nat? Are you working so hard? Vicky, you're now into purple. I love that one. That purple was really pretty, right? Mixing that. What a nice evening. Thanks, Diane. Um, thanks for being live. You are welcome. I love this. We do this every Friday night, and we did it on Thursday this week, too. I enjoy spending time with you guys. If you aren't watching live and you're watching after the fact, thank you. Please remember to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and thumbs up the video. It's super helpful. If you're watching after the fact, please leave a comment in the regular comment section of the YouTube video. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you're following me on uh, Vicki Booten Artist and that you um, also like the video. I love when you leave comments. Let me know where you're watching from. Just check in and let me know you're here. I love it. And you haven't, if you haven't joined already, make sure that you come and join in to uh, on my Facebook group, Vicki Booten Creative Community. Um, I really want to start more conversation and art sharing on that page. So my goal is to pop on there every day with question of the day and have more interaction. So if you're on there already, I love it. I just love this community. And even though the world is opening up and we aren't all stuck at home, which brought a lot of you to watching these lives, I hope that you still can find some time 
to um, come and hang out with us in this group. I love it. And make sure you find some time to get creative as well, because it's super important to the mind, body, and soul, right? And if you're Canadian, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, because uh, eat the turkey, have the pie, enjoy uh, yourself, a little bit of wine, some family, friends, do all the things. And oh, Mary is saying, I'm very new. Can you mix using crayons and inks? Yes. Yes, you can. It's all water soluble. So just depends which tool you're using. I wouldn't mix like the same tools in the two of them. But yes, you can. Um, watching from Mississippi on Facebook. I love that, that we're all over the world. Um, I love that. So yay. Very good. I love your lives when I can catch them. Thank you, Jennifer. Happy anniversary to Rich and I. Thank you. Um, I will make sure we take some pictures. And thanks, Natalie, for waking up for a little bit to watch us tonight. <laughs> Natalie is um, one of my um, design team members and friend and helper. She is awesome. And Mari as well is on our design team. So I love that. So thanks so much, guys. Have a great evening. I am signing off at four minutes to 11 um, because I said to Rich tonight, I'm not going to be on there long because like I'm a little tired tonight and I get on here, man, and I just start getting creative and it's the best. So we will see you next Friday for um, how we're going to elevate these now and turn them into something other than just fun artsy mess. Okay, so thanks so much, guys. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. If you have any questions, you know where to find me on the creative uh, page uh, on Facebook, and I will make sure I answer your questions. So we'll see you later. Thanks so much, as always, for joining me, and have a fabulous weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.